Hi, Tom here from Green Engine Recording. As this is a really confusing topic, I thought I'd make an easy to follow guide on how to make the ultimate audio hackintosh for use with Apollo's and other Thunderbolt based audio interfaces. This will give you a stable plug and play computer where iCloud and Thunderbolt work right out of the gate and it behaves just as a Mac would. But my main advice to you is do not do this. Don't do it to yourself. You don't need a mega powerful computer for music production. A used M1 Mac Mini with 16 gig of RAM would be plenty adequate enough. But if you want to use PCI cards to be able to upgrade to storage and RAM and like the process of building, giving yourself a major headache and troubleshooting for hours on end, then this is definitely something for you. I have problems with my motherboard, my graphics card, my RAM, thermal paste going everywhere. But if that hasn't scared you off, you're still with me, you're not on your way to the Apple store right now, let's get into it. These are the parts you'll need for this build. The last generation of Intel processor natively supported by Apple is the 10th generation Comet Lake. I'm using an i9 for 10 cores, but it's the speed rather than the core number that's the most important factor. You'll need a Gigabyte Z490 Vision D motherboard, at least 16 gigabytes of the fastest RAM your processor can support, a power supply, anything over 600 watt will be ample here, a compatible graphics card if you want to have more than one screen attached. I bought this Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX 580, but found that this old Nvidia GT640 worked plug and play too. A compatible Wi-Fi card like this Fenv 1200M, and an NVMe M2 SSD. First we need to build the computer. Take out the built-in Wi-Fi card because that's useless. Unscrew the heatsink, take out the little screw here, and then we can nap out the Wi-Fi card, throw that away, and this is where we're going to put our M2 memory card. Now we replace the heatsink. The next thing you want to do is to put your RAM in. If you're only using two sticks of RAM, then you're going to use slots two and four. I'm using four, so here come my other two. Next is probably smart to put your heat sink on your processor. I'm not going to do that now, but you want to get a pea-sized little bit of thermal paste on there and then attach to the heat sink and any fans to the processor fan points. Then if we get our power supply, plug the ATX main supply for the board in down here, and then the CPU power needs to be connected to the top here. Now we can put our graphics card in if we're using external graphics. The Sapphire card here has a BIOS switch. If it's to the right, then it's in turbo mode and you'll only get a black screen, so keep it to the left in normal mode. I'm going to put that in the top so it doesn't get in the way of anything else. And then we connect the power to that. It's got two ports, but just a single cable will do like this. It piggybacks the other power onto it. When you're installing Mac OS, you're going to need an internet connection. So either use the ethernet ports here, only the red one works right now. Otherwise use a natively supported wireless card like this Fenvi. I can put this in on this tiny port down here. For Bluetooth to work, you're going to need to plug in the USB power supply. Now we're going to adjust the BIOS settings on our Hackintosh's motherboard. Okay, start up the system and press the delete key after you see the Gigabyte logo. Right, I've got mine on the advanced settings. If I go to simple, uh, we can see up here, my BIOS version is F20. That's where I want it. If you haven't got to F20, you need to download that version of BIOS from the Gigabyte's website. Don't go higher than F20 as there's no way back. Uh, if you need to do this, after putting the download file on a USB stick, use the QFlash function in the BIOS, which uh, you can see here is the hotkey is pressing F8. And there it walks you through updating it. I want to get out of this and go back to the advanced menu by pressing F2. And now I need to optimize the BIOS so it has the right settings for a Hackintosh. If you go over to save and exit and load optimize defaults, then it resets everything that might have been changed. Then you can go through and change the following settings. First you want to go to the Settings tab, go down to I.O. Ports, and turn Internal Graphics to Enabled. Then scroll down to Wake on LAN Enable, and disable that. Then open the Thunderbolt configuration, and turn off 
wake from Thunderbolt devices. If you go into the security level, make that no security, and then into the discrete Thunderbolt configuration, here we want to enable GPIO 3 force power. I'm going to escape to get back out of this menu and go down to USB configuration. Here we want to turn legacy support to disabled. And now we can scroll over to the boot panel and down to secure boot and disable that. Now press save and exit setup and the computer will restart with the correct BIOS settings. Now we're going to start installing the software. There are ways to do this in Windows, but I'm going to cover how to do this on a computer running OS X. There's a couple of pieces of software you need for this. You need to download Hackintool, which you can find on GitHub. You need OpenCore Configurator, where the latest version is on Mackie 100 projects. And you also need the EFI folder from Schmocklot, which you can also find on GitHub. Now I need to download OS X. There's multiple ways to do this, but I think this is one of the simplest, because you can choose exactly which version of Mac OS you want without having to worry if it's going to be verified by Apple. You need to make sure you have at least 40 gig available on your current OS's hard drive, or it will fail. So paste the following to terminal and press enter. Then you'll need to enter your password and it'll load a whole load of lines of code. I want to install the latest version of Big Sur, so I'm going to press 9 and then enter. Now it's going to start downloading. This is going to take a good long while, so I'll speed this up. Now wait, it's not done when you think it is. After all the lines of stars, it's going to start packing the DMG installer ready for use. Now you can quit terminal and navigate to your hard drive. Go into Users, your username, and find macOS Installer. Then you'll find an installer file. Double click on the installer file. Now don't just drag the file to your Applications folder. You need to actually make a copy there. So you want to hold Alt while you drag. OK, now we're going to prep the USB stick. Put the USB stick in and open Disk Utility. Under View, you need to change the view to show all devices, not just volumes. And then click on the actual USB stick. Go up to Arrays. And now you can choose GUID as the partition map and Mac OS Extended as the format. Call the stick My Volume with a capital M and a capital V. Then click Arrays. Then click Done. Now we need to open Terminal again. Now run the Create Install Media command line in Terminal. Type your password, then press Y and return. Depending on the speed of your USB disk, this could take some time. Now we can quit Terminal and find our new disk. Now we're going to open Hacking Tool. We want to go over to the Disks column, find our USB stick, and click the up and down arrows to mount it. Type your password. Now the EFI file is available on the desktop. Now we want to get the file we downloaded from Smuglord. So you can find the EFI file in there. I want to copy that whole folder onto the EFI volume. Now we want to open the EFI file we just dropped there. Inside OC, there are three config files. Choose the one which suits your setup and rename it so it's just config.plist. I recommend using the top one if you have a K CPU that supports onboard graphics and just setting up the external GPU later if you have one, as this will also let you use three screens. Now we need to right click it and open it with OpenCore Configurator. Go to the platform info on the left, click the Data Hub tab at the top, and choose iMac 20.2 from the drop down menu below. Now we need to change the serial number, so we'll click this a couple of times. and save the config and quit open call configurator. Now we're ready for the installation. OK, now insert the USB stick into one of the USB 3.2 ports above the Thunderbolt ports on the rear I.O. panel of the motherboard and reboot the system. After the Gigabyte splash screen, the open call boot picker will appear. Choose the option Install Mac OS. I have more options than you will here because I already have a working system. I'll speed the video up here. The Mac OS installer will take a few moments to load and run. If successful, it will ask for language preference and present a set of options, one of which will be Disk Utility. Click on that and press Continue. Now you want to find the drive you want to install in onto. Hopefully you've only got one to choose from. But you need to change the view to show all devices. Mine's a Kingston drive, so I've chosen the whole drive, not just the partition that's already on it. I want to click Arrays, and here we need to make sure the drive is called Big Sur. The format we want is APFS, and we want the GUID partition map. Then click Erase. 
It's now going to format that drive ready for installation. Done. Now we can quit Disk Utility and select the option to install Mac OS Big Sur. Press continue. Agree. Agree. Choose the drive you want to install to. I have two here. And press continue. I'm going to speed this up again. This could take a while, so go and grab yourself a coffee. Now the computer is going to restart, and at the open core boot picker, there should be a new entry called Mac OS Installer. You'll get a countdown timer telling you how long it'll take to install. You don't need to press anything as it'll automatically boot from there. And finally, we've got to select our country and region. I'm going to choose United Kingdom and press continue. Continue. That's not for me. Fine. Not now. Sign in with your Apple ID or create one if you don't have one. Agree with the terms and conditions. Agree again. Continue. 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 I don't use Siri. Continue. Let's go dark. Continue. Cool. Now we're in. So now we need to open a hacking tool again. So put that on a USB stick and put it into the computer. We'll put a version of hacking tool and the open core configurator into your applications folder. Then open your applications. Right click on hacking tool and press open. Open. Now go over to disks. Now mount the EFI from your installer USB. I have here. Type your password. Copy that EFI file to the desktop. Now unmount that so you don't confuse the two EFI folders. And then mount the EFI from your new drive. There's nothing here right now, so we just want to drag the EFI folder over. Now we can shut down the computer, remove the USB stick, and we should be able to boot from the computer. Keep by flash screen, and then we'll get the open core loader. We'll choose the drive called Big Sur, which we've just installed. Password. And we're in. Almost there. Now there's a couple of small things we need to clear up in OS X to make sure that sleep is working properly. We open hacking tool again. Power. Press the screwdriver to make changes. And Hibernate is set to zero. Proximity weight set to zero. And TCP keep alive. It's a bit difficult to click on. Press zero. Now Command S to save that. And quit hacking tool. Now we just go to the System Preferences Energy Saver. Uncheck Wait for Network Access and enable Power Nap. Now if you have a working Bluetooth card, you need to go to the Bluetooth Preferences, press Advanced, and uncheck Allow Bluetooth Devices to Wake This Computer. I've also overclocked this, so my processor, which is rated 3.7, is now running at 5.2 GHz. I'll quickly go through the BIOS settings if you want to try this and you've got significant cooling. From the Favorites panel, change the CPO clock ratio to 52. Change the ring ratio to 45. Turn on the Extreme Memory Profiler. Change the CPU vCore load calibration to Turbo. Increase the voltage to 1.310. And go over to the Tweaker tab. Change the vCore voltage mode to Fixed vCore. Go up to the Advanced CPU settings. Disable the speed shift technology. Disable the CPU EIST function. Disable the energy efficient turbo. And disable the turbo boost technology. Now go over to save and exit setup and reset. And you should be running at 5.2 gigahertz. You can see here the frequency of the CPU is set at 5.2. If you have an Apollo with a Thunderbolt 1 or 2 card, the inexpensive Apple Thunderbolt to 3 adapter works great and if you have multiple Apollos, you can daisy chain them with this. So here's my UAD control panel. Now I'll start the Apollo, and there it starts to show up. If you look at about this Mac, and go to system report, you'll see under Thunderbolt, there's nothing showing. But under PCI, it shows Universal Apollo 16. So there you have it, a powerful, stable Hackintosh, ready for your next audio production.